over 10.3 made three-point field goals a game. That shows you where they started from. But Mike Young looking for a little bit of that three-point magic back here in the Cambridge Pavilion tonight. All right, Yellow Jackets win the opening tip. Great to have you with us tonight here in downtown Atlanta. Alvarado's really been a hot shooter and comes in averaging 13 points a game, but he has been shooting through the roof in recent games. He'll take it. The junior from Brooklyn, New York, spinning into the lane. That's where they really live and die, as you point out. That shot's blocked out of the sky by Beattie. The rebound by Wright is up and in with a stick back. And that is part of the problem, but also part of the solution for Georgia Tech. They haven't finished well, didn't finish well at all versus Notre Dame, but had 20 offensive rebounds for 25 second chance points and off to a great start tonight on the glass for Moses Wright. Dolly has been the top scorer all season long, 18 points a game. Strong move into the lane by Radford. He'll take the foul as we toss it over to Katie George. So, guys, Josh Passner said it was completely up to Michael DeVoe to start tonight. He felt good going through warm-ups. He felt good during shoot-arounds, so they put him in the starting lineup. I asked Passner, would he be under any kind of minutes restrictions? He said, no, I don't even know how to do that. You're either all in or you're out. So we could easily see Passner and DeVoe go through 30 minutes a game tonight. But it should be interesting. He's going to help out Jose Alvarado, who's averaged 20 points in his absence. So a game time decision. He's the top scorer on the court for the Yellow Jackets, 16 points a game, hitting about 41% from three-point land. When he's been out of the lineup, they have missed him dearly. They really have because everyone just crowds the lane without the vote because they don't fear Georgia Tech shooting the basketball from beyond the three-point arc against Notre Dame. Jose Alvarado made three of his seven attempts. The remainder of the team only made one out of 11 three-point field goals. Alvarado pounding it in there. He's playing the best ball of his season right now. He really is, and maybe the best of his career. He got off to a great start as a freshman. Really, you know, slumped a bit during his sophomore year, but right now you see him coming back after injury and playing tremendous basketball, trying to lead this team and pick up wins, especially here at home. But the key for Virginia Tech is going to be outside the arc. And Landers Nolly, who is an Atlanta native, yes, off to a big start for him, knocking down his first three. Out of Langston Hughes High School, he led them to three state championships. He said, the last time I played on this court, I won a state championship in high school here. That's got to be a great omen. And, of course, it's a comfort level that you have when you know you've had success. And speaking of success, mm. Jose Alvarado having success early, two out of three for him as he's come out extremely aggressive on the offensive end of the floor. First prospect from New York City to play for the Yellow Jackets in 20 years. They used to do very well in New York back in the Bobby Kremens days in particular. And Bobby Kremens, a New Yorker himself, who had the ties in New York City. And I believe that maybe that last New Yorker coming in here, especially starting point guard, might have been one Stefan Marbury. I think you're right. A pretty successful single year here. Not too bad. The swing up top, shot clock down to two. Beattie didn't get a look at it. He gave it up, and he gave it up too late. That's a shot clock violation. And that's what we've grown accustomed to seeing from Josh Pastner's defense over the past three seasons here. And this year defensively, they haven't been the same, but a lot of it has to do with their offense. Playing a faster tempo, teams are scoring more points, but Josh Pastor still feels as though his team is a good defensive group. And they get a big man in the middle in James Banks, the third 6'10 senior, one of the best shot blockers in the ACC. On the baseline, down low DeVoe. He'll kick it into the corner for the long one. It's a round and out by Usher, who only makes 14% beyond the three-point line. They do not take many of them. Long distance, Nolly. Not this time. Nolly, about 50% of his shots come beyond the three. He absolutely loves that shot. Here's the ball. He'll stick it from three point land. And we see that. What is that called? Is that a shimmy? I know it has something to do with the guitar. But I what think is you're right. that move? Katie George has been studying this and looking at tape all week long. And she's got the story on that. Radford swooping into the lane with that left hand. So a 9-5 lead for the Yellow Jackets. And as, uh, as aggressive as Alvarado has been early, Tyrese Radford has been just as aggressive getting to the basket. He drew the foul on James Banks early and now getting to the rim and able to finish. But he's been challenging the bigs. Alvarado taking a tumble. 
Foul on the play. For more on Alvarado, we go to Katie. Guys, it's not an original celebration. I will tell you that Jose admitted that he saw former Laker Lance Stevenson do it after a three. So he wanted to try it out, which he did in his first game back from injury against Houston out in Hawaii. Ever since it stuck, these fans, they love it. Why Lance Stevenson? Well, they're both from Brooklyn, so Alvarado said he wanted to make this a New York thing. Yep, Brooklyn guys sticking together. Right down to the celebration. I tell you what, he's not making any friends doing that. Whatever it is, guitar shimmy, mm. we'll call it that, in front of the Virginia Tech bench. Nolly to penetrate, he'll lay it in. Very strong move all the way to the hole. He's got five. And Landers Nolly has the ability to put the ball on the floor to play off the bounce. He's not just a shooter. And you mentioned that 50% of his shots come from beyond three-point arc. I believe he can be even more effective if he put more pressure on teams attacking the rim. Alvarado trying to take over early. Here's Moses Wright, a 6'9 junior, getting 13 and 7. Nifty spin, but he cannot finish it. The break now for Radford. Nolly back to Radford on the baseline. Trying to collect his own miss, but taken away by the Yellow Jackets. Georgia Tech trying to move the basketball in transition. And that's knocked down by the red hot. Jose Alvarado already with nine. Jose is having his way, and he's tired of losing here on his home court and has come out tonight with the determination that he is going to change the fortunes of the Yellow Jackets here. Nolly, too strong. And Alvarado there to collect the rebound. Alvarado missed seven games early this season with an ankle injury. When he's returned, the offense has benefited in a huge way. They're a different looking offensive team. They really are. And they kind of got into a groove. They had 10 games where they had their whole complement of players in the lineup when you consider Alvarado and DeVoe. And Jordan Usher coming back from the transfer. So, but of course, the DeVoe injuries took him out of the last three games. Josh Pastor happy to have DeVoe back. And right now, Georgia Tech off to a great start with everyone on the floor. Yeah, a lot of energy. Trying to get it downstairs to Banks. The kick to DeVoe. Yes! A smooth-looking triple to make it 14-7. to seven. And we watched Josh Pastner and his team go over the post trap in their shoot-around this morning. James Banks recognizing exactly where his teammate would be when the trap came. That was great preparation from Josh Pastner to get his team ready. Virginia Tech, a much smaller team, doesn't have much choice but to double team Banks when he catches the ball. Smaller the and very young, Radford. Nice on the spin. Man, is he emerging here at this point in the ACC schedule? He really is. And when you think about, of course, his team being down right now, but it, Tyrese Radford is not phased by any of it, continues to go out and compete. And he didn't like, you know, the shimmy, guitar shimmy from Jose <laughs> Alvarado either. Alvarado off the window for two more. But all they've done is make Jose Alvarado mad. He took one in the chops on the last possession. And then after that bucket, he had just a little something to say to the Virginia Tech bench. Give him 11 points. He's off to a terrific start. On a penetration back again, and there's Banks to meet him. James Banks in this one. And there's one thing, when you play in this league, and you hear about another point guard getting a lot of attention for something, as Wabisa Beattie has gotten a tremendous amount of attention for being, you know, at the top of the country and assist to turnover. Jose Alvarado looks like he's come out and taken this matchup a little bit personally, going at Beattie early in this game. He sure is going at the entire team. And paying off on the other end, Beattie. Cone will back it out. Hokies coming off a 74-63 loss to FSU on Saturday in which they took 33s. They made only seven of those. More with the rebound. You know, and another thing, Obi, we didn't talk about yet. Virginia Tech has won six straight games over Georgia Tech. Mm -hmm. There's no one on this Georgia Tech roster that's ever beaten Virginia Tech. And so that's one of the things I'm sure has stuck out to Jose Alvarado as well. The veteran for this team as we see Jordan Usher getting into the paint once again. Two more points in the paint for the Rambling Wreck. But I'm sure that's something that Josh Pastner has talked about as well. He's a, he is a coach at, at Georgia Tech, has never beaten Virginia Tech. And you use everything you can as oh, a head coach. Absolutely. Especially when you're two games under 500. You mentioned Beattie so secure with the basketball. Recently had a six 
turnover game against Miami, very out of character for him. From the corner, B.J. Horn is coming up a very cold game. 0 for 6 from 3 against FSU. P.J. Horn often going out and playing against much larger players. Tough to make shots, especially from the perimeter, when you don't have the legs after battling with the big guys. Moore got himself a good look off a nifty fake, but it's tipped out of bounds off the Yellow Jackets. 11-21 to go first half. Georgia Tech up 18-9. Young in his first year at Virginia Tech. Mike grew up just about 20 minutes from Blacksburg, Virginia. In Radford, Virginia, where he actually was assistant to Oliver Pinnell in the late 80s. And Mike is a basketball lifer, played for Fletcher Aaron at Fork Union Basketball. Hunter Couture into the game, shot clock down to nine. Nolly off the fake. Shot clock a factor now. Nolly's going to have to get it in the air. Can't hit it off the back of the iron. Yellow Jackets up 18 to 9. And we're seeing Josh Pastner do something else new this year that he didn't do much in the past, which is take Jose Alvarado out of games. Although Alvarado did play 40 minutes at Notre Dame on Saturday, but that was the first time this season he's gone wire to wire. Nolly with the kick, Cone will fire, and it was in the cylinder and it kicked out. And see, that's the worst kind of misses because the ball actually went down and then found a way to get out of there. Jalen Cone, who was shooting the basketball so well, hasn't been able to find many good looks as of late, but Michael DeVoe, another good look in the paint. Yes, where they have 12 points. 12 points already in the paint for Georgia Tech. And you can see that they have no fear of any rim protection for the Hokies, Virginia Tech only plays their tallest players, Landers Nolly, at six foot six. And so you'll see the Yellow Jackets attacking the paint all night long. Well, they need Nolly. He's fouled on the baseline with 9.50 to go in a half. They've gone about four minutes since they've scored, fouled by Jordan Usher. And there's Mike, who's so successful at Wofford before taking the job at Virginia Tech. And Mike Young is the epitome of giving your players confidence. He lets them know you can shoot it, let it fly. He only asks that you defend and rebound, play hard, but he gives you the confidence on the offensive end of the floor, which is why his teams are always at the top of the three-point ranks. And Jalen Cohn unable to knock down another one, got a good look on that. And they need for him to get hot to have success here. Oh boy, do they. I mean, that's 54% for him beyond a three for the season. Moore again to penetrate. That's the Yellow Jackets game. Ball loose to right. And they continue to dominate in that lane. And Moses Wright has improved so much over the past couple of seasons for Georgia Tech, giving Josh Pastner another interior presence. And when you talk about a team that shoots as many twos as Georgia Tech does, you need to have multiple players that can get it on in the interior. And Moses Wright is definitely one of those guys having a great junior season. And they're using their size to big advantage. Shot clock to five. Wilkins gives it up. Here's Radford to penetrate. He's denied. Never got it to the rim. A shot clock violation. Well, Saturday at noon Eastern right here on the ACC Network. Sunshine State rivalry game between Miami and eighth-ranked FSU. Knowles have won four straight against the Hurricanes, including an 83-79 OT win January 18 at Coral Gables. Is FSU the best team in the league right now? Yes. I, I wanted to come up with a diplomatic answer. <laughs> oh, you don't have to be diplomatic. <laughs> I do believe that they are. Uh, they stumbled at Virginia, but one thing between Virginia and Florida State, Virginia takes Florida State out of the way they want to play. No one else can do that. As we look at Virginia Tech shooting three, started out shooting three for four, but since then, one for ten, they've cooled off from the field. Part of the reason why they trail by 13, but I, I do have to say that as of right now, I do think the Seminoles are the best team in the ACC. Louisville right behind, and Duke probably third right now trying to play catch up with those two. Holly's triple, boy, it hung on the iron. They're getting quality looks from three-point land. They're just not falling. Here's DeVoe. Last minute, put in the lineup. And as Josh Pastner told Katie, 
He's going to play a lot of minutes if he starts. Trying to get in that paint again. Back up top for Usher. Way downtown, Duvall, but not there. Rebound snatched out of the sky by Radford. But that's a six foot one guy going up and getting that rebound. Tyrese Radford rebounds like he's six eight in the paint. It's safe to say he'll work it off. That menu, and then go visit your personal physician late in the afternoon. My <laughs> goodness, but it's good stuff. Well, how about the fact that he has the Atlanta Hawks tattoo? And of course, I'm sure Landon yeah. Nolly wants to play in the NBA. What if he doesn't get drafted by the Hawks? Right. That'd be a little odd playing for the Timberwolves with a Hawks logo. <laughs> yeah, it might be some uh, some touch-up <laughs> work to be done, perhaps. <laughs> Seven and a half to go. Georgia Tech continues to play shutdown defense. It's been over six minutes since Virginia Tech got on the scoreboard. A swing for Usher in the corner. Boy, Georgia Tech came out with great energy. A flip over the shoulder. 24 to 9. Duvall with another couple in the paint. They have 16 in the paint. But Georgia Tech is playing very intelligent basketball. They know there's no rim protection in the game for Virginia Tech. So you see Michael Duvall, Jose Alvarado, all these guys, they go into the paint and take their time. They don't have any fear of getting their shots blocked. Short jumper, and finally that drought ends. Isaiah Wilkins will stick that. And again, over six minutes since they last scored. 24-11, Georgia Tech. So, so far, it's been a story of the Yellow Jackets doing what they do well, and the Hokies failing to do what they do so well. Banks thought he got shoved, but no foul on that play as he missed in close. And if there's any knock on James Banks there is the fact that he does not finish in the paint the way you would expect for a senior to do, especially with someone with his athleticism. He does the great job defensively, but too many opportunities in the post he does not take advantage of. Moore will take the hit foul. Here on the Hokies on Cohn. And right now, Georgia Tech happy to have Michael DeVoe back in the lineup and making plays. Josh Bassner making sure that if he was going to play, he was going to start and he's going to play heavy minutes. Otherwise, don't even go out there. Alvarado back in. Got off to a incredibly hot start with 11 points in about the first seven minutes. And this is where Jalen Cohn really has to show his measure as he comes into the game to guard Jose Alvarado. But Alvarado just picks up where he left off before he took the break on the sideline. And Jalen Cohn has to be more of a pest defensively, when he, especially when he's not making shots. He's got to prove his worth for Mike Young putting him on the court. Wilkins who just hit the jumper and that one's going to be tipped up and in and once again Radford getting up there I'd say what I am impressed with Tyrese Radford his ability to go after offensive rebounds Yeah, he plays with a lot of heart a lot of gumption For a man of his size only for the Hokies who have dropped three consecutive games and right now Mike Young basically saying that his team just needs to find a way to figure it out They've had struggles shooting the basketball and the, the same has been the case here tonight one for nine from three-point territories the team that averages 10 point three point field goals made per game But that's where they have to get their scoring to neutralize the size from the larger opponents that they're playing against in the ACC DeVoe trying to get in that lane and the offensive foul that will go against him with 518 to go. How does he look to you so far? He, he looks pretty good. You can tell that he's not 100 percent because his moves aren't as explosive and trying to get past defenders. But you know the thing about DeVoe he has great size for a shooting guard and has the ability to shoot over top of you know smaller defenders so but that time you see him actually using the chicken wing the hook to try to get around his defender because he doesn't quite have the explosiveness that he usually has in his game 16 points a game missed the last three because of a foot injury he's trying to bounce back from calling the bounce for Radford coming up on five minutes to go Okie's trying to get their offense in gear on the turnaround, short by Nolly. Usher breaking out. In transition, and a collision in the lane, and a tie-up on the play, and a possession arrow will take it to the other end of the floor. 
Well, we'll have a women's hoops doubleheader for you Thursday. Two great matchups on Tobacco Road, the rivalry game between North Carolina and Duke. That's at Cameron Indoor. Then number five, Louisville, hosting number 17, FSU, at the KFC Yum Center. Louisville 10-0 in ACC play. They have a 13-game winning streak overall. And Josh Pastner asking for more from Khalid Moore. Going to the basket there and allowing P.J. Horn to make a great play and tying it up with the block shot. And Moore is athletic enough to be able to finish that over the top of P.J. Horn, but doesn't come away with the bucket there. And actually the possession goes back to Virginia Tech off of a beautiful find from Jordan Usher. Four to shoot. Nolly gave up the dribble. Beattie from the corner. Line drives that one in right at the horn for three. And a great sign for Virginia Tech. They needed a bucket, and they, more importantly, they needed to be able to make something from beyond the three-point arc. And their leader, Wabisa Beattie, steps up and makes a big shot for them, making it a 10-point game. Hokie's a team that can climb right back into a game because they don't foul and they don't turn it over. And that's one of the areas where Georgia Tech has done a great job of thus far in this one. But a turnover by Alvarado there, anticipating the roll from James Banks III, which didn't happen. Nolly, another good look. Rebound tipped out of play by the Hokies. Nolly has missed his last six. And Virginia Tech is going to fight. One thing about Mike Young's team, they will not give up with B. Sabidi, the heart and soul of the Hokies. Three ball. 60% you know, of his scoring from beyond the three-point arc. They have to be able to be proficient from behind the arc. Both teams doing a pretty good job taking care of the basketball. Only three turnovers apiece for Mike's team. That's pretty par for the course. At this stage in the game, about 3.40 to go in a half here in Atlanta. A little different for Georgia Tech, but this is a team that only had five turnovers a season low versus Notre Dame on Saturday. Had 20 offensive rebounds and still unable to get a win. That's almost unheard of as Michael DeVoe continues to play bully ball. Taking advantage of his size getting close to the rim and at some point or another Virginia Tech is going to have to put up for some resistance and stop the Yellow Jackets from finding their way to the rim so easily. And again DeVoe the highest rated prospect that Josh Pastner has recruited to Georgia Tech. He's out of Orlando. And that's going to be a foul with six seconds on the shot clock. And that's an offensive that will go against Obi Sabidi, the junior from North End over Mass, will pick up number two. And give Bubba Parham credit for getting over there, getting in position, and recognizing that Beattie was out of control in that possession and taking the charge. A turnover, a rare turnover for Beattie, who's one of the country's best in assisted turnover ratio. Alvarado zips the pass to the baseline right. He'll get hit with 2.41 to go in half number one. Now tomorrow is National Signing Day, and the huddle will break down all the ACC recruits. A signing day special at 5.30 Eastern on the ACC Network. No one covers the ACC like we do. Right to the line, only 57%. Katie George, you were in the Virginia Tech huddle a moment ago. I was, and Mike Young was very complimentary during the timeout. He was pleased with their efforts on the defensive end. He said, offensively, I'm happy with the work on the offensive glass. And then he told them, we're getting great shots up. We just need them to fall. Please stay patient. And then he urged them to hang on, to finish this half strong so that they're in striking distance in the next half. And I love the advice from Coach Young, but the problem is they've come out of the timeout and given a 4-0 run to... Georgia Tech and just like that another turnover for the Hokies giving the basketball back to Jose Alvarado and the way that Georgia Tech has operated on the offensive end of the floor the last thing you want to do is continue to give them opportunities and OB I talked about you know the fact that they had the 20 offensive rebounds at Notre Dame they had 23 more field goal attempts than did the Fighting Irish and still did not win that game with five turnovers, you would think that that was a game that the Rambling Wreck would have had in hand. Hey, Banks with a pretty hook. His first basket of the game. Came in averaging 10 points, eight rebounds per game. Gets to the line a lot. He has made it 32 to 16. And two more points in the paint for Georgia Tech, who's doing a tremendous job of being true to who they really are. You don't see him firing up a bunch of threes 
and getting out of character. They're doing a tremendous job getting the ball in the post. And James Banks doing a great job of sealing his defender behind him and then going over that left shoulder, nice right hand jump hook, knowing that he's not going to be challenged by P.J. Horn, who's he's five inches taller than. Well, Georgia Tech really sticking to the game plan, getting into what Passner calls the red zone in that lane over and over. Nice give inside the paint, but Wright couldn't finish it. 32-16, the Yellow Jackets. Nice pass. And finished on the other end by P.J. Horn. But Hunter Couture doing a great job attacking and then recognizing where Horn was going to be, not where he was at the time, and passing him open. If we're going to use the red zone as a reference, let's go with passing him open on that. Sure. Switched in from three-point land. Alvarado's had a big half, give him 16. Under a minute here in the first half. Tough drive, can't finish that oh. play. Horn though, but a whistle. And, and, and the crowd is not gonna like this. Josh Pastor doesn't like it, but it is the right call. Teddy Valentine right on top of it. So Jose Alvarado comes over to take the charge and moves out of the way. But because there is contact close to the restricted area, he's now moving and he does not jump straight up in the air and go with verticality. So the conversation, I like the fact that Teddy Valentine is having the conversation with Alvarado. But Alvarado's reaction, <laughs> you see the two of them having a laugh. He's saying, now just, just go away. <laughs> but that was the right call. Alvarado got over to take the charge, and then at the last minute decided to try to get out of the way. So once there's contact, he's going to get that blocking foul. Horn misfiring, however, at the line. 35-18. Georgia Tech and the ball with under 40 to go. Now Georgia Tech came out playing with a lot of fire, especially the man with the ball here, Jose Alvarado, as it batted right back to him. Here's the ball in the corner, shot clock at eight. To the lane, got the pass free. Alvarado, long distance, and his great half continues with 19. He has been the star. The Brooklyn, New York native has lit it up here in the first half. Nolly has to fire with shot clock winding down. That won't go. And Georgia Tech heads to the locker room, bouncing in there behind Jose Alvarado. And at the end of the shot clock, Alvarado, no hesitation, knocking it. Miami last week, unable to come back, but did make it a ball game at the end. So we'll see what tricks Mike Young has up his sleeves here coming out in the second half. It's one of those hold the phone games because they can get so hot beyond that three point line and typically take so good care of the basketball. So underway in the second half here in Atlanta. Alvarado gives it up to devote played almost 19 minutes in the first half. Down the lane swooping in Usher makes it takes the hit he'll be at the line. And you couldn't have scripted it better if you're Josh Pastor coming out of halftime. You draw up what you want to execute on the first play, knowing you're going to get the basketball. And Josh Pastor has to be excited about the way his offense is executed because we know how excited he is about the way his defense is played. He talked to us about that going into the half. And gave you all the credit in the world for inspiring his team. You know, I appreciate it. If I can be bulletin board material for a coach, I will gladly be so. We'll see if Nolly gets heated up here in the second half. They need him. PD will kick it up top. Shot clock to eight. But the Yellow Jacket defense has been impressive all over the floor, frankly. Two to get off a shot from the corner and swished in. Nice touch by Horn. Really needed that. A welcome basket. You see the reaction from the bench. And everyone here in the maroon and orange excited about P.J. Horn knocking down that three, not only for what it does for the team, but what it does for P.J. Mentally, of course, having to battle on the interior against the bigger guys to be able to make shots is important for P.J. Horn. Seven to get a shot in the air. Alvarado slamming on the brakes. Here's Usher. 
Back to the hot hand. He's got to shoot it. In traffic, flipped it up there and it won't go. Rebound, kick back out for Usher. Second effort. Here's Alvarado again. And they're going to get a third crack at it. Alvarado will penetrate, float it up there and draw the foul. He's 79% at the foul line. He had a nine steal game against NC State this season that broke Kenny Anderson's school record. Nine in one game. Uh, when I saw that note, I was blown away by that. Jose Alvarado, a tremendous competitor, but nine steals? Th that's a lot in the game. There have only been three players in ACC history to have more than that in the game. The league record is 11 steals. and. I, that was, that's way too much defense. I can't even imagine coming away with nine steals in the game. That means I would have had to play 40 minutes of defense, Obi. Well, so, and I know you're very capable of that. Uh, but Alvarado, sure that. You know, his scoring has been through the roof, 20 points or more for the fourth time in the last six games. Reaching 20 at the line there, 42 to 21. Nolly off the fake. A two-pointer, banks it in. And the nice play by Landers Nolly, not trying to go all the way to the rim, but going to the mid-range, and an easy look for him, a 15-footer off the glass, he can make that shot with consistency. But I like the way that he reacted once Georgia Tech got out and did a great job of getting him off the three-point line. DeVoe looking inside, trying to trigger Banks. He'll back it away with a shot clock winding down. DeVoe on the spin. Usher, one to get off a shot. And a whistle in the lane. And that foul will go against the Yellow Jackets and go against Jordan Usher. And Usher trying to attack, but you have to watch the right arm. He extends it, pushing off Naheem Aleen. James Breeding right on top of that one. Hokies looking for a big-time momentum changer. Aline trying to give it. Rebound tipped to the ball, and here come the Yellow Jackets again. And that shot looked a little rushed from Aline, a capable three-point shooter. Beanie with the personal, his third. On well, a very important point guard for the Hokies. And if you're Mike Young trying to make a comeback, the one guy that you can ill afford to lose is with Bisabidi. He's the guy that you go to to be the coach on the floor for you. And execute your offense, of course, the leader of their defense. And Jose Alvarado recognizing this three fouls, he's going to do everything he can to go at yep. Beatty to try to get that four. Devo wide open to bury the three. 12 points from Michael Devo. And that goes in that second chance points category. Another offensive rebound. This time, the smallest guy on the floor, Jose Alvarado, coming up with the offensive board and finding Michael DeVoe who's quietly having a pretty good game. It's hard to see what DeVoe's been doing because of what Alvarado's done in this game, but DeVoe already in double figures as well. Nolly and a foul here against Georgia Tech on the shove by Moses Wright, his second. And Alvarado going to the rim, unable to finish, but comes up with the basketball, recognizing he's amongst the trees. Kicking it out to Michael DeVoe, who has the easiest look of the game and knocks it down for three. You look at DeVoe, averaging 16.2 a game, six in the ACC, and his minutes are up. 12 points a night, five for eight from the field. Now, early in the season, DeVoe actually led the country in three-point accuracy. He couldn't miss. I mean, it was a time after about six or seven games, he was at 75% from three. And was leading the ACC in scoring, got off to a great start on this season, then went through a slump right before Georgia Tech went to Hawaii, got out of that, that slump in Hawaii. And then, of course, they got Jose Alvarado back in the lineup, and these two guys played very well together until the turned ankle by DeVoe in the Louisville game. He's not the last visitor to Hawaii who's gone there to get out of a slump. Alvarado <laughs> down on the baseline for right. He's banging into that lane. That's where they want to live and die. And 6-2. Nothing you can do about that. Moses Wright at six foot eight. Landers Nolly 6'6. Six, six. And Moses Wright showing off his strength as well. Nice post move to get another point. Two points in the paint. Now for the Hokies, it's going in the wrong direction since halftime. Nolly flips it up there. He'll take the hit. And we'll see now if Alvarado 
is all right. That'll be his second foul. 1540 to go. That looks like it hurt on Jose Alvarado and I can tell you what hurts if you're Mike Young and you've got a high enough so he seems fine <laughs> but Josh Pastner held up a board that had five X's on it in two blank spots currently Georgia Tech has five kills which means three consecutive stops he's wanting them to get two more he says seven is the standard all well, I can say about that is to be young yes because if that were me Obi you would be coming and picking me up off the floor right now and bring you like to the that. ER. Believe me, I'd just, be right there with you. I'll put both hands up, just drag me off the court. Got to say this about Jose Alvarado, heck of a player and also very musical. That he is. Singing, yep. playing the guitar. He's Air done guitar. it all here. Yep. And soon to be a dad, like any minute. Yeah. He's going to be a proud papa. Shot clock at three. Right trying to penetrate, airborne. And a battle for the rebound. Banks tying up there. But that's yeah. deflating when you come up with a good defensive stop, but yet you can't corral the rebound. And Josh Pastor made an attempt as Alvarado makes a very clever play. Usher. Yes, and one. Well, he turned that into quick points, and he is having a spectacular night and not only can he sing and play air guitar but he can also dance and because he has such quick quiet feet Jalen Cohn never even recognizes that Alvarado is there and Katie tell me a little more about Jose well Corey if you're wondering why his hair looks longer than normal he and his father are currently growing their hair out until his daughter is born and like Dave said that could be any minute so I know you were asking him today what happened to his haircut while well, he's waiting until his daughter is born so Katie now if you have a game like this you're Jose Alvarado and you've done everything well tonight even once your daughter gets here oh no you keep it okay I'll just make sure going. I'll make sure we were going I mean you know we heard about Samson and Delilah yeah yeah, yeah. you keep that going <laughs> By the way, he's not the first as Nolly turns to fire. He's not the first dad who has ever had a big night, you know, with the impending birth of a child. But he came out shooting the cover off it and has not stopped shooting it tonight. And right now, it has been struggle city for the Hokies, a team that's normally very shorthanded with the basketball. A turnover on an empty possession for Mike Young and Mike Young just trying to find something to work in his favor 25 points after 26 minutes being played in this game is unheard of for the Hokies as well as they shoot the basketball right scoops it up got it out of the iron plucked away by Banks he can't hit it but they continue to dominate on the offensive glass Couture no on a run out, he can't finish. When it rains, it pours. A wide open layup for Hunter Couture, unable to finish. And a three point play on the other end of the floor for Moses Wright, which is now a four, but can be a five point swing. Nolly's third. And Moses Wright just recognizing the size is not there to compete in the paint from Landers Nolly. Going right over the top and finishing off the glass. Right into double figures. He's only 57% at the line. He played only one year of high school basketball in Raleigh, North Carolina. Wasn't even rated at all coming out of high school, but averaging 13 points, seven rebounds a game for the Yellow Jackets. Wilkins on the turn, got a good look, but no. I mean, nothing falling for the Hokies. Barham will off the three. And uh -oh. why not? That's the uh -oh. kind of night they're having. It's that type of night for the Yellow Jackets. Mike Young has seen enough trying to find a way to stop the bleeding as everyone is getting involved in the mix for the Yellow Jackets. The rambling wreck up by 30 having their way here. Bubba Parham now on the board. We're back in the Camish where Georgia Tech has taken a commanding 30 point lead. 10 of those points coming from Moses Wright, who played tennis up until his sophomore year of high school. Around the same time, he had a massive growth spurt, which is why he transitioned to basketball. 
He said so many years playing tennis actually proved to be a great foundation for his basketball game. The footwork he learned in tennis translated so well to playing in the post. Wright said playing multiple sports and not just specializing in one at a young age helped his overall growth and development as an athlete. Corey, I mean, do you feel like there's truth to that? I do, Katie. I, I think that young people should play as many sports as possible, you know, especially until they get into high school. Specializing can often be difficult because you don't train other muscles as Naheem Ali knocks down the three, the much needed three. But, you know, Katie, for you, you played how many sports? I know you played volleyball. Did you play basketball? What else did you play growing up? I played basketball, softball, volleyball, and tennis. So four different ones. Don't stop bragging. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it ain't bragging it doesn't if mean it's I was true. very good at those other ones. <laughs> oh, I guarantee she was. You seen her catch a football, by the way? No. And, I, and I'm scared too because again, if she catches the football better than me, we're going to have a, a we're going to have oh, to run some routes. I think you may have to be running a little bit. So you're saying I'm on the shot clock. I'm going to have to play defensive back. I'm then. just saying I'm going to get moved. I've seen the real thing. Yeah. Well, Virginia Tech finally knocking down a three, but you know before that one by Aline, their last four games, including tonight, hitting only 28 percent. Well, Obi, you and I were in Blacksburg a couple weeks ago, and we watched this same Virginia Tech team beat North Carolina in double overtime. They made 14 three-point field goals in that game since then they have not made double-digit threes and part of the reason why they're in a you know three-game slide and which could be four here is they've been doubled up in the scoreboard 56 to 28 by Georgia Tech and so right now Mike Young trying to find a way and it's not just about the three-point shooting it's also about the defense they have not been able to find a way to stop Georgia Tech or many of the teams they played over this last stretch and that's been one of the big issues is when you can't make shots on one end, but you can't stop the opposing team, that's a recipe for losses each time. Couture will draw the foul with 12 and a half minutes to go. You know this far better than most. The season will find a way to expose your weaknesses. Now, a couple of weeks ago, this was an NCAA tournament team. It was a team very much in the conversation. You go back to the huge win they had over, you know, number three ranked Michigan State in Maui. And they were the talk of, you know, the ACC, because when you think about what Mike Young had coming back for this team in his first year, they were the least experienced team in the league, one of the least experienced teams in the country, one of the youngest teams in the country, got off to such a great start. And many of us, you know, singing Mike Young's praises as a, a, a ACC coach of the year candidate. But just like that, that shows you that this is a unforgiving league when you have to go up against the, the quality of teams that are in the ACC on each and every given night, very difficult to win. Foul on the deck, Georgia Tech. One second half point, yet his team has increased the lead from halftime. 20 points for him tonight, three assists, only one turnover. And piling up a big 58 to 30 lead here against the Hokies, right at the line. He has six double doubles so far this season. He's on his way to another one maybe tonight. And you know the thing I love most about Jose Alvarado, you know, for me, Obi, if I have 19 first half points, you already know I'm thinking at least 38, if not 40 for that sure. game. Yeah. Jose Alvarado has come out with a completely different approach here in the second half. But as Josh Passner mentioned, everything for him is about winning. It has nothing to do with personal stats, with individual numbers. It's about winning. And what he's needed to do in the second half, knowing that he was going to get a lot of attention from Virginia Tech's defense, is facilitate and run the offense. He's done just that. DeVoe open. Can't drain the three. And you're right, it's a highly intelligent way to play the game. You know they're going to double up on you. They're, they're going to come at you with more than one body most of the time. Why force it? And he hasn't done that. He stayed away from making mistakes. And continue to make winning plays, especially defensively. We saw the steal, which allowed Jordan Usher to get the and one. But Josh Pastor said it best. He plays hard the entire time he's on the floor. And right now, this is the... You know, when you look at the offensive group that he, that Josh Pastor has on, especially in the backcourt with Bubba Parm, Alvarado, and Michael DeVoe, it's difficult to help off of any of these guys on the perimeter as Alvarado looks at a three, unable to go down. But this is the group that you can't pack the paint against. You have to respect all those guys on the perimeter. Cone back to lean to the lane, and a big fellow will knock it in, Ojiaku. Ojiaku, a 6'10 freshman from Nigeria, has not been much of a story yet in this game. He hasn't. He actually hasn't been much of a story offensively in the past three games. 
had five points versus North Carolina in their win, but since then hadn't scored. So he's not much of a guy that you're going to rely on for points in the paint. Does more of his damage on the defensive end of the floor. Parham mid-range for two. He's got five. Bubba Parham out of Snellville, Georgia. Transfer from VMI to make it 60-34. to 34. Wilkins finds some room to operate in that lane. It just wouldn't go down. Second effort. Couture to the baseline. Off that fake. Yes. First bucket of the game. The freshman from Orlando originally committed to play for Coach Young at Wofford. But Simon the Hokies when he took the job in Blacksburg. So 60 to 36. As we approach the nine minute mark here in Atlanta. Parham with a look away. Down the lane, he missed the dunk, but a foul on the play as Moses Wright went airborne. Well, there are highlights, and there are almost highlights, and this is almost a highlight. Moses Wright going in. Ojiaku going vertical. But that's one of those plays when you go to the rim that strong, you're going to get the benefit of the doubt from the officials. Wright doesn't miss many shots. Number two in the ACC in field goal percentage a Saturday at noon Eastern. On the ACC network, we have the Sunshine State rivalry between Miami and number eight FSU. Knowles have won four in a row against the Canes. Chris Likes leading Miami with 24 in the overtime game back in January. One of the most underrated rivalries in college basketball. You think about the fact that Leonard Hamilton coached at Miami, was the Big East coach of the year at Miami, and really got that program restarted. So he's got a lot of ties in the Miami area, and you look at what they did in overtime on January the 18th, Devin Vassell doing what he does, having a big night. Chris Likes had a big night in that game, and going to be interesting to see how the rematch goes. I think that Florida State has the best backcourt in the ACC, but... Defending Chris Likes is always going to be difficult. FSU also a terrific coach in Leonard Hamilton. Leonard's had a great career. Swished in from the corner by Parham has come off the, off the bench and he's hit a couple of big threes. 64-38. Here's Nolly who's been chilly all night. Nolly's missed 10 of his last 11 shots. And he got the game started off, knocking down the three, and looked like he was going to be off to a great start in front of the 28 friends and family here to watch him play for the first time as a college player. You mentioned before, 28 was his good number for him the last time he played here at McCamish Pavilion, winning a state championship at Langston Hughes High School. Off the iron, it won't drop. Story of the night for the Hokies here in Atlanta. And the story of the night, he won 0.1% from beyond the arc. So Mike Young's team has struggled to find the center of the rim. And right now, just cannot find a way to get into any rhythm. Give Georgia Tech's defense credit for slowing down what was one of the best offenses in the ACC. But you look at the numbers tonight, it would be hard to recognize. It really, in fact, you look at the last three games, Corey, 61 points, 61 points, 63 points. The three lowest scoring games of the season, they're on a pace for even less than that tonight. Yeah, right now, the way that they're playing, they would be fortunate to get to 50 in this game. It really has been a struggle offensively. And you've got to credit Georgia Tech because oftentimes when you play zone defensively, that gives teams confidence in shooting the three, but Georgia Tech has done a great job still covering up the three-point line, and you can look at the numbers, four for 19 for the Hokies, to the credit and the, definitely the pleasure of Josh Fashion, the way his defense is played. Now the lead has been as high as 30 for the rambling wreck of Georgia Tech tonight. Trying to get back to that, but that one airmailed from the corner by Parham. In transition, the Hokies now, Nolly. He's had such a cold night, picked off by Parham. And he's going to lay that one in on the other end. 66 to 40. Yeah, something that the Hokies don't do much of, but that's the eighth turnover 
for Virginia Tech. And when you're not shooting the basketball well, one thing you can't afford to do is give it to the opponent, especially live ball turnovers that turn into points on the other end of the floor. And a bit 12 points off turnovers. Nolly with the follow. Just nine points for him, came in averaging 18. Number four score in the ACC. Trying to press, and that'll result in a turnover. Bradford all the way through, can't connect. And that's happened too many times for Virginia Tech, just unable to finish, and it turns into buckets on the other end of the floor. Another four-point swing, which should have been a layup for Bradford, doesn't, doesn't make it. And the easy one for Banks on the other end. And a traveling violation. We have women's hoops doubleheader for you Thursday. Starting at 6 Eastern on Tobacco Road, the rivalry game between North Carolina, Duke, and Cameron Indoor. Then number five, Louisville hosting number 17, FSU at the KFC Yum Center, which might be my favorite venue right now in college basketball. It is a great place to call a basketball game. You've got great fans. They are very knowledgeable fans, recognize what's going on in the game of basketball. And you're talking about 25,000 people cheering on. Yes their team as well as any in the country. Banks going over the shoulder. He'll draw the foul with six minutes to go. And the other thing about the Louisville fans, you talk about great fans, they support both programs yes. really passionately. One of the reasons why both programs are nationally ranked and always <laughs> at the top of the heap when you talk about teams nationally, you know, in women's and men's basketball. So you're absolutely right. And great resources and support for both those teams and the academic advising too. James Banks at the line as we go to Katie George. Well, James Banks, when he transferred here from Texas a couple years ago, he got really, really close to associate head coach Eric Reveno. <laughs> Moses Wright skyward off the alley-oop from Alvarado to make it 70 to 42. Well, a couple of spectacular Georgia Tech dunks tonight. We talk so much about Louisville. We got our, our biggest addition from Louisville, Katie George. Louisville gave us Katie, so we've got to be fortunate for that, just like Jose Alvarado was giving to Moses Wright. A beautiful highlight, the nice lob, the great finish by Wright, and that's the way it has gone for the Rambling Wreck here tonight. A 28-point lead for Josh Pastner's group, who's probably putting together their best complete performance of the season. Would have to be, right? 10 and 12 coming in. They have lost six consecutive games to the Hokies, but looking to put that in the rearview mirror in a big way tonight. And what I love about the ACC, you know, we can go back to the first half and remember Jose Alvarado being upset about a call and going over and talking to Ted Valentine. And now you see the two sharing a laugh. It's been that type of night for Jose Alvarado where he's even having a good time with the officials. Sure, on it's the all floor. roses and kisses now. <laughs> Parham kicks it here. Shot clock at seven. Alvarado. Got a look at it. He'll cast it up there, but misfire. A lot of second efforts on the offensive glass by Georgia Tech. They're a good offensive rebounding team. They really are. And a team that values the paint. They want to win the painted area. Rebounding is big for Josh Pastner. Not only for his bigs, but for his guards as well as Jose Alvarado. Gets an ovation as he checks out. Not sure we will see him for the remaining 5 6 of this game. Well, he certainly showed up for the first 35. Indeed, the main he cog in the wheel tonight. Yes, he was, especially in the first half. 19 first half points. And he came out so aggressive in this game as though he had a point to prove. And we're talking about, you know, this is a team in Virginia Tech that he's never beat in his career at Georgia Tech. Another junior from Brooklyn. Jose Alvarado leading the charge this evening. And Georgia Tech looking to pick up their fifth ACC victory of the season. Couture to drive it. Trying to get that shot off the window and it's going to be dunked in. 
70 to 45. And a whistle with 419 showing on the clock here in Atlanta. And right now, Josh Pastor thinking he wants for his team to finish this game the right way. 419 is a tremendous amount of time remaining. And not that I think that Virginia Tech is coming back from a 25 point deficit, but what he does not want to do is for this to get, you know, much closer. He wants to be able to get guys who haven't got minutes much throughout the season into some action but at the same time you're playing against a team that is dangerous can shoot the basketball the way that Virginia Tech has you can't really take your foot off the gas pedal too soon and allow the Hokies to find a way back into this when they make it a game over the last four minutes and very few things will bother a head coach more than you know having like a, a 25 30 point lead have it whittled down to the end maybe get away with an eight or nine point win you know, not sustain it for the full 40 minutes. Well, it does. It leaves a bad taste in your mouth when you've had such a great performance for the first 36. And then if you do, you know, give away some of that lead at the end, it doesn't look as though you played as well as you actually did. And this is a game where Josh Pastor can be extremely happy for his team on both ends of the floor the way they've approached this game here tonight. And he was absolutely delighted that you showed up to broadcast the game because... He I appreciate gave you that. all the credit in the world for inspiring his team at halftime defensively. I mean, you and I have worked together long enough now. For, you know, we've known each other a while. You know, I don't mind taking credit. Not at all. For even things I didn't do. I think you're really good at it, actually. <laughs> I appreciate it. Cohen takes the bump. He'll be at the line with 335 to go. Let's go back to that alley oop. Well, we've Just seen a few minutes ago. A number of spectacular plays from Jose Alvarado tonight. And this one will go right alongside his catalog of beautiful finds. Moses Wright getting out on the break for the finish. A great, great performance opening night at NC State, getting a win on the road. Georgia Tech struggled mightily without him in the lineup. But now that they have a full complement, Josh Pastner looking to make it come back in the ACC, which the middle of the pack is wide open right now. So. You know, more performances like this for Georgia Tech. They can find themselves right in the mix. Bump and a foul, 327 to go. Alvarado, by the way, also had 20 points against Virginia Tech here last year. What was a three-point loss? Hokies at the time were ranked number seven. So he's duplicated that, but looks like with a better result tonight. And Phillips at the line. And Friday at 9, we have the next Bald Men on Campus, our weekly studio basketball show previewing the weekend's ACC slate of games with Billis Ellis and Greenberg. This is my new favorite show. Yeah, I'm hearing you like that. Love it. Good stuff. Still haven't watched it. I'm normally traveling on Fridays around that time, yep. so haven't seen it yet to tune in. But three guys, if I have to listen to someone about basketball, these are three guys that I might give an ear. And highly entertaining. There's a lot of, you know, back and forth. There's a lot of gentle ribbing. But the information's great. And they have absolutely not one hair between the three of them. No. They need to shave eyebrows, everything. Right. Flipped it up there and blocked on the play with 255 showing. Now, one thing I can say, Obi, is that Brendan Johnson for Virginia Tech after the two plays I've seen him, the tip dunk, and then the offensive rebound put back, he may be a guy that can give Mike Young a couple minutes because what we've seen from him going to the offensive glass, and he has athleticism to be able to finish in the paint. You know that the Hokies lack size. You know, and that's one of the things that you can find out in a game like this, down 20, but they continue to play. Brendan Johnson could be one of those guys, and now he picks up a foul, and he gets fouled, with trying to box out James Banks and Banks going over the back has an opportunity to put more points on the tab for the Hokies at the line and enough to bring for Josh Pastor to bring Jose Alvarado yeah. back into the game. We talked about this at four minutes and just like that, it's a 20 point game right now with Brendan Johnson the opportunity to make it less at the free throw line. Without time going off the clock too for the Hokies. So Johnson trying to give them a lead lift. 
And can't hit at the line. Under three minutes to go in Atlanta. Alvarado, a 20-point night. And he's been so good with the ball, he's going to dribble down some clock here. Down to five. Got the pass inside for the easy two for Banks. And a timeout. A great find by Alvarado as Josh Pastner is now going to get more subs into the game. And after that play, Alvarado will come back out of the game. And it wasn't an area where Josh Pastner really wanted to get Alvarado back in, but didn't like the direction of the way the game was going. So he hits the floor, calms everything down, gets an assist, and back to the bench. And what would have been an 18-point game if Johnson makes two free throws is now a 22-point game. Those four points is a big difference for Josh Bassner, much more comfortable with the 22-point lead. Bounce speed for Wilkins. Off the iron. So Georgia Tech, certainly a much needed win. Should they salt this one away, it'll be number 11 on the season. Shot clock to five as they throw away a foul on the play. That will go against Parham and be number four on Bubba Parham. Transfer from VMI now. Give you a look at the Yellow Jackets upcoming schedule. Figured to be a tough three-game run with Virginia Tech, Pitt, and Louisville. Yeah, what do you think? You know, challenging certainly one of the best teams in the league there, number five, Louisville. Do they have a fighting chance? Well, they do. They went to Louisville and had a lead at halftime in their first meeting. And that was the game where Michael DeVoe turned his ankle and was uncertain as to whether or not he was going to be able to play in that game. Ended up playing 36 minutes. But coming into this building, and I'm sure it'll be a rowdy environment when the cards come in here. And we've seen Josh Pastor pull off a number of upsets in this building as the coach of Georgia Tech. So I would not put it past them, but Chris Mack will have his group ready. They're not the same team on the road. But still, one of the best teams in the ACC, still pretty good on the road. Oh, well, nice save on the baseline there by Virginia Tech. And a lean, 115 to go. So that lead, which has been as high as 30 tonight, sitting at 20. Price lost his footing and a travel. With one minute to go. Now for the Hokies, a look at their schedule forthcoming. Boston College coming up on Saturday. And Pitt, Miami at Duke and then Virginia. Well, it doesn't get easier, but Boston College is actually the team that started the slide for Virginia Tech. So I'm sure they'll be looking forward to getting, you know, opportunity for revenge on the Eagles coming into their building. Well, Jalen Cohn fouled in the act of shooting a three, so he'll be at the line for three shots. So with a loss here tonight, the Hokies will drop to 14 and nine, and that will be four consecutive defeats. So the Hokies trying to figure out, can they turn things around in the month of February, when just a couple of weeks ago, they were certainly looking like a very hopeful NCAA tournament team. And Jalen Cohn, happy to see the basketball go through. It's been a struggle for him offensively over the past three games. Make it four games now. And Mike Young going to have to find a way to get some confidence back into his freshman. And that's the thing. He's playing, you know, four and five freshmen significant minutes. And many of them right now are hitting that proverbial freshman wall. And the problem is they're all hitting it at the same time, which has been part of the reason for the struggle for the Hokies. 
foul underneath. So what do you do to correct that? You're talking about getting confidence back. It's a hard thing to do with younger players, especially who are not used to playing this many games this deep into the winter, necessarily. It's very difficult. And one of the things you have to do for Coach Young is, and it's easier said than done, but stay positive with your group because so much of what he does is coaches confidence. And so therefore, he has to keep the morale of this team right going through this stretch and more importantly, make it to where they are still confident shooting the ball. Each and every one of these players know where the problem lies. It lies around the fact that they have not been able to make three point shots. You still want to continue to get up shots, but you also don't want to make it a bigger deal than it actually is because that would make guys lose confidence in their shot. Well, Mike Young's a very positive guy. He really oozes that. His team's certainly going to need it coming off of a bad loss here against Georgia Tech on the road. With 10 seconds to go, Wilkins will loft up a three. Well, the last Georgia Tech victory over Virginia Tech was way back on March 8, 2014 until this moment. They snap a six-game losing skid.